Have you ever thought about how awesome it would be if there was an easy way to just see all devices that are exposed on the internet? Devices like webcams, web servers, remote desktops, industrial control systems, power plants, or even a control panel to someone's garden. Welcome to Shodan. I've seen Shodan described in various ways, but Shodan is basically a search engine for the Internet of Things or devices connected to the Internet. Meaning Shodan is like Google, but instead of searching web pages like Google does, Shodan is searching devices exposed to the Internet. And it's constantly scanning the entire Internet in order to find all these devices, which ports are open on them, and try to identify which services are running on that IP address. So, why is this interesting and possibly bad? Well, for example, a lot of these devices that are exposed to the internet might have default passwords, like username admin and password admin, or they might have software that never gets updated, or perhaps the owner never even intended for this device to be exposed to the internet, like a webcam inside their own house showing f sleeping family members. A lot of people also put their NAS, their network storage device, on the internet free for everyone to access. And then in comes an attacker and uploads ransomware to it. Then when the owner clicks on that file, their computer is now ransomware and is unable to, to be used anymore. This is where Shodan shines. By using very simple searches, you can find these devices, you can search for your own IP address or your own company and see what you expose out on the internet. So let's go through how to, how to use Shodan. You'll find it by going to shodan.io and you'll be presented with this page. And it is free to create an account, which I recommend that you do because you can't search with filters if you don't have an account. And as I said, it's free. Shodan actually turned four years old the other day and they had an offer that you could purchase a lifelong membership for four US dollars. So if you, if you missed that one, yeah, it's gonna hopefully come back when they turn five years old, I'm not sure. So yeah, you create an account and then you log into it and you'll be presented with this page. This is the search field, you can, and you can see I've already had some, some pre-searches here. So you can search for literally anything. You can search for IP addresses, you can search for company names, you can search for product names, you can search for ports, anything that you think of, really. Um, and as I said, it's, you can search for webcams, for industrial systems and everything. So let's start with just webcams, because, I mean, seeing someone else's webcam is pretty awesome, to be honest. At least that's what I think. So, up here, in the search box, just type webcam. And then you'll see that the total number of results are 10,279 exposed webcams on the internet. And that's a lot. And then you can see the breakdown of the countries, uh, which ports they're on, or services, and then the organizations and stuff. And we'll come back to searching for all of these. So, I mean, yeah, that's all. That's all fun and all, but we want to see webcams, right? So you can add, and you can do this without an account, but in order to actually add filters, which is what we're going to do now, you need to have an account. So then you can add this one. Webcam has underscore screenshot colon true. Click search, and it's quick. And here we go. So you have 456 webcams exposed to the internet that actually has screenshots. And what that means is that show then when Shodan indexes this, this IP address or this service, it actually captures a screenshot of it. So then you can just scroll through it. And this is pre-capture screenshot, so you're not doing any form of illegal uh, activities by just browsing this. So you're fine doing this, and you have various webcams. This seems to be someone's kitchen, I suppose. This might be a dog pen of some sort, I'm not sure. Um, and again, this is just stills from the screenshot. You can click into one of these, and we'll do it just to show you. So you just click on this, open a new tab, and then you're presented with 
the information for this IP address. So you got the IP address, you got the host name, uh, you got the city, country, organization, and some stuff like that. And then on the right hand side, you'll see all the open ports on this IP address. So for this one, you, there's only one IP address open to the internet, and that's 8888, which obviously is a webcam. But let's keep on let's keep on scrolling down just to see what else we can find. Then you have to click next to continue. And we'll do we'll do more searches, uh, but webcams is a is a really good start, I think. Let's just scroll through what else we can see. This is someone's is that a dog? I think it is. So this was indexed uh, at well today. Um so that's pretty interesting. And this is is this a preschool or just some playground thing? I'm not sure. Yeah, so I, I would assume the kids actually play here during the day. Uh, and this is actually live on the internet, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, let's click one more just to see. This seems to be another, probably some animal shelter, I'd say, I'm not sure. Uh, what else do we have? We have the same one that we saw before, some black ones. This is actually a bird's nest, that's pretty cool. I'll watch this. Yeah, this is someone's office. Not sure what this is. So this is from Ecuador, in Quito, in Ecuador. Um, so yeah, someone's office, and you can just see the screens live. Uh, I have to just click on this, and then you'll see the screens live. So yeah, you probably shouldn't uh, expose stuff like this on the internet, to be honest. But there's more than just webcams. As I said, you can search for literally anything. So now we've searched for um, a product of some sort. Something has the, the word webcam in, in its name. So let's search for just ports, because you can do ports as well. And we want to do port 5900, because that's VNC. VNC is a, is a remote connection protocol, so you can just set up your own uh, VNC server. Um, you can set up with a password. I know many don't. And that's what we're going to find out here. So basically, this, the ones that has set up services that exposes this to, to the internet has opened up a remote connection into their environment. Again, we're presented with just a list. So there's basically almost a million of devices that has this VNC exposed to the internet. And you can scroll through these lists, but it's not that interesting. Again, I want screenshots because that's it's more fun to watch. We'll do the same thing. Uh, actually, we'll we'll add something else. And I'll just paste the rest in and we'll see what it does. So let's talk about this. So again, you have ports. I do port colon and then quotation marks. And within those, I have two ports, 5900 and 5901, because that's the default ports for VNC. And then I want to find VNC servers that doesn't have a password set. So I added this, authentication disabled. This will give you all the VNCs that doesn't have a password. And then again, I added has screenshots true. So has underscore screenshot colon true. Let's see. This is probably one of the, the scary parts of this video, I'd say. Um, some of these will just be blank screens or just black screens, but let's scroll down. Um, and then here's a clock of some sort. Here is a wastewater treatment plant. You can see, I don't know, trends. Uh, if it has some alarms, log in. So it probably seems that we're not logged in on this one. It, may, it might not be that bad. But again, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be exposed to the internet. Sorry if I keep just coming back to that part, but I, I will, because it's stuff like this amazes me. This click onwards. Let's click onwards and see what else we have. This, I don't, I can't read this, but it's, uh, yeah. I have no idea what this is. PH2, I don't know, a water facility or something? I have no idea. Uh, let's continue scrolling, just a couple of pages. And this is a garden, yeah. A gardening control interface. So it's a garden scheduler settings debug. You can set valves to off, min, and max. 
and set it manually. Yeah, so I suppose you can control someone's garden stuff with this. That's probably not good. All right, so that's uh, this VNC. I mean, that's scary enough. So we've gone through, we've searched for, for product names, for ports. You can search for IP addresses. Like if we do Google's DNS server, 8.8.8.8, just to show. Um, and then you get some information and then you get the service. And of course it has um, port 53 is DNS. So that's naturally open. Um, so you can search for IP addresses. You can search for IP ranges. And then up here, you can also search for cities. You can do city, uh, uh, Seattle let's say. And then you get all the exposed devices that are on the internet in Seattle, which is 4,600,000 something. And then you can also, you can use these um, menus on the left side to sort of narrow down. So you go, okay, so I have Seattle, but I want to see only like HTTPS. And then you can just click that one. And then we will add it up here to the search. As you can see, it added port 443. And then you can just continue doing this. And you can say like, oh, I want to see only uh, like Nginx servers, which is a web server. Now we're down to 39,000. And then you'll see, oh, I only want to see the version names. So probably the oldest version might be interesting. Probably 1.10.3. Okay, you click that one. And you can see there's 600 of them. And then it, and it just keeps on adding stuff into the search bar for you, basically. You can also search for state, so you can do, you can do, I can't even type, you can do state and then like WA for Washington, and then you'll get all the devices in Washington states, which is literally the same thing. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it's registered as Washington, I suppose, but Libya, Suriname, Qatar is probably not in, probably not in uh, US, as far as I know. I showed an indexes, everything like this, and you can also search for terms or words that are in the actual content. Um, like say you search for hacked, for example, or hacked rather, it, it seems I've done that before. And then we get 4,501 results, which seems that most of them are, or has been hacked at one point in time. So the host names of these are hacked router help SOS was MF worm infected, okay. This one is hacked router help SOS vuln EDB 39701. Not sure which one that is. Uh, host name hacked router help SOS had the dupe password. So you can obviously see that these devices has actually had some form of vulnerability or uh, like default passwords. You can also you can also add certain terms. So let's say we want to keep the hacked, but we want to see. Uh, on port 21. So port 21 is FTP. Um, let's see if this actually gives us something. We end up with 290 FTP servers that has its name hacked FTP server. All right, so, I mean, that's good and all. It's, it's fun to see what's out there and it might raise some awareness that you shouldn't just put stuff on the internet and expose everything. So what you can do to protect yourself is, of course, you can search for your own IP address. If you put your own IP address up, up in here, then you'll get what you are exposing to the internet or your, your company or your, your, your organization or school or something. Like search for yourself and make sure that you're not exposing stuff that you shouldn't have. Another thing that's really cool about Shodan is you can use it to uh, monitor your own environment. Uh, so up here, you have these small little things, one called monitor. So on monitor, you can actually, like, yeah, as I said, you can keep track of the devices that you have exposed to the internet. So let's do that. You end up in here and you can set up your network monitor. And, and I'll, I'll just click through this and I'll explain what it does in, in the meantime. So you can set up to monitor your network for like open ports, if something changes, if there's a vulnerability uh, on something that you expose to the internet, and then you will get notified uh, about this like immediately, which is really good. So let's do some, some tests. Let's just do a test network because I'm not gonna enter my stuff. And then we'll enter some, some public uh, DNS servers. Let's do uh, Google's DNS server is 8.8.8. .8 .8. 
And we'll do quad 9 as well. 9.9. I can't even type. 9.9.9.9. Right, so let's say that these two are um, our IP addresses. We'll add that to this network. And yeah, you can also click and on this notification and then you'll get notified when something changes or some vulnerability gets added that you should uh, like be notified about. Uh, do click add network. Uh, you see it's added here. You can go to dashboard up here. And you'll see that your top open ports, I mean, assuming that I actually own these, which I don't, uh, then you'll see that my top open ports are 53 and 443. In your case, it will probably be some, some other ports. You'll see that if there's some ports that are not, are not that usual, then it will show up here. So if you have a port that shows up here, you probably should look at it and, you know, verify that it's actually supposed to be opened because it, it might not. And then on this pane, you'll see the top vulnerabilities. So if you're running a software or service of some sort and it hasn't been patched in a while, which a lot of systems are not, then you'll see the vulnerabilities up here in the top vulnerabilities, which is quite nice. Yeah, so there are some limitations to this. Um, so if you want to add another network, then you can see that I can only add 14 more IPs. So your account is allowed to monitor up to 16 IP addresses. That's because uh, while I have an account, I have a lifetime account on Shodan, I can't actually monitor unlimited amount of IP addresses because you need to buy, um, I don't know what it's called, tokens or some sort. Uh, so yeah, so you, have, you, you, you can monitor as many as you like, but you'll have to pay for it. It's pretty good. Um, here's the plan. If it's cheap or expensive, it's up to you. I don't know, depending on your, your organization. Um, but these at least are the plans. That's how you find it. So yeah, I can really, really recommend doing this. Like adding network, and you can also add a domain. Um, like my domain is zerodaypanda.com. Then I'll add this, and if something happens, I want an email. Um, and that's it, basically. This is a really good way. Unless you want to go back to children every single day and just search for your own stuff, then add this, um, and then you'll get notifications. It's really, really cool. And the last part is probably something to, you know, I don't know if it's cool or scary, not sure. And if you search for ports, and you do port 3389, which is remote desktop in Windows, you probably shouldn't have remote desktop exposed to the internet. But 4,700,000 devices are. So let's just add a word. Let's add Bitcoin to that. Because, I mean, there's only four results. Um, but you'll see, I mean, these guys has been ransomware. Um, that's a ransomware note. Um, oh yeah, this guy has a username Bitcoin. That's why it showed up. All right, so not that interested. Uh, was it Satan? I know your IP. Hurry up to Bitcoin me. Okay, so ransomware, probably, or maybe just change the name, actually. Probably not, not ransomware, to be honest. Again, another one, also ransomware. And you can remove Bitcoin here. You can do, again, if you want to see all the screenshots, has underscore screenshot colon true. All right, so how many remote desktop are exposed to the internet, which we can get a screenshot of? And that's one million bit more. Right, that's it. I hope you liked it. And I strongly encourage you to use Shodan. It's really, really cool. It's really fun. Uh, it's, really, it's a bit scary sometimes because when you see like the stuff that's open to the internet, but like use it, click around and use filters. You can Google for uh, Shodan dorks if you want. And then you'll get like lists of uh, good Shodan searches that you can use. Um, so yeah, that's it. See you next time.